Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Game Object Recorder to record an animation and then save off the keyframes so you can play it back later. This could be useful to save, save on performance or maybe to fine tune the motion of things or just to get a quick, easy setup animation. So you can see here I've got a scene that I got off the asset store, this palm tree. I'll share the pack in the description. And if I play through the animation, let's just hit play and watch and yeah, you can see it's an explosion so it looks like everything's flying out and all of these objects position and scale are tracked right and I didn't do this by hand like I said I used the game object recorder to do it so if you look right here there's a hierarchy recorder script added to this environments object and this script is available in the forums for this new feature and uh, I'll, I'll put a link to that too in the description so you can grab it and try it out yourself what it needs though is an animation clip and then it's got a little record checkbox. So I'm gonna go through and just reset this up so you can see exactly the process that I went through and then recreate it yourself. So let's see, first let me just delete out the old clip that I have. So I had this environment clip, that was the animation. With the environment selected, now you can see it's missing here. So with the environment selected, just go in and create an empty animation. Just call this explosion. I'm going to just put it right in the root so it's easy to find. So now I've got this empty animation here and I need to assign it to this hierarchy recorder. So I'll just go down to the root and drag the explosion animation in here. Now I needed my objects to fly away and explode. I'm going to uncheck this and I'm going to show you how that's done. So with this, this sphere right here, which is not rendering because I turned it off, has a little exploder script. Let's pull that up and see what it looks like. So if you take a quick look here, you'll see on enable, we just call explode, which just finds all of the rigid bodies in the scene. And then we add explosion force with a variable that's in the inspector. 700 seemed like a good value. And then the second variable here or parameter is the explosion position. So I'm using the spheres position as the explosion position. And then we just pass in a radius. So this just lets you do a nice explosion effect, you know, pushing out all those rigid bodies without having to calculate everything out yourself. Now let's jump back over to the editor. So if I press play, I'm not going to use the animation yet. You see, this exploder will just explode things, they'll blow up. If I disable and re-enable it, they explode again and again. If I start it again and maybe go with a I don't know, about 200, See, it's a much smaller explosion. Oh, they kind of get knocked over. So let's record one at 400. That's, that's going to be our variable. So this is what it'll look like in the animation. It should look just about like that, even with that extra barrel going flying off. So to record it, all I need to do is go over to this environment script or environment object that has the hierarchy recorder on it, enable the hierarchy recorder, and I, I, I'm going to enable the record option afterwards. So let's just turn off this sphere and we'll turn off the record. I'll show you why. So I hit play and now when I'm ready to start recording I just enable record then I'll go over to sphere and enable that. And bam now they'll blow up. I go back over to here and uncheck the record option. And what that's doing is saving out this animation so everything that has happened since I checked record and unchecked it, it's getting saved off into this explosion animation. So now if I stop playing, I can select my environments object and then just go to the animation window and you'll see here, this is all that time where I didn't do anything, where I was just sitting there clicking over to the sphere and then right over here somewhere, let's see, where is it? Ah, it's way out here. So at about four seconds in, we actually start getting the animation. I must have been pretty slow on my clicking. So yeah, there we go, we've got the animation at this four second mark. And we could just delete it all out um, and kind of truncate it to here if we want. But instead, what I'm gonna do is just record it again with this stuff all enabled from the start. So I'll just enable the sphere and I'll enable the record option. I'll press play. And then as it explodes, oh, it didn't explode. Why didn't it explode? Oh, I know why. It didn't explode because I already have the animation on here and the animation is holding them. So let's see. 
Let's turn that off. There we go. There, so now they went flying, and I'll uncheck the record. What was happening there is that the animation was automatically playing, so it's keeping their position you know, locked to that one spot. The force was getting added, but the animation was putting them right back, so they couldn't actually move. So there we go, we've recorded the animation. I stopped, and you can see now we've got rid of all that empty white space, or empty space. And again, you could always you know, select and delete all these other keyframes, and then just drag everything over figure out exactly where you want it. But I just wanted to show it again and show that issue with the animator, how it can break things. So that's kind of the basics here. It seems like a pretty cool component. Um, I'm kind of excited to see what else gets added with it. Uh, I guess we can take a quick look at the code. So the hierarchy recorder, like I said, it takes a clip here. It has this record option. And then all it does is create a new game object recorder, sets the root to the object that it's on and then it binds the transform. And then in late update, um, assuming we have a clip assigned, so if there's no clip assigned, nothing happens. If it's recording, a recorder takes a snapshot, passes in delta time. If it's not recording, it just saves the clip and then does a reset. That's not too complicated, pretty easy to do your own thing there. And um, like I said, I'm excited to see what else we can do with this. I was thinking it might be kind of neat to build a system where I can hook up some Vive trackers and use the controllers and maybe record character animation easily. It seems like it could be a lot of fun and maybe a, a nice use for it. So yeah, go ahead and try this thing out. It's in 2017.2 uh, in the beta and I hope it'll get even better as, uh, as the beta ends. So yeah, check it out. Try it. Let me know if you build something cool. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.